okay to continue to pray so we're in the right place. Amen. Amen. And not only are we in the right place physically, but think about where you're at in that right now. Think about what trials, what testings, what you're going through right now. You're in the right place emotionally and physically to give God some praise. To give God some glory.
of the Israelite people. And when Moses, who led these Israelite people through the Red Sea, when he died, he had already prepared Joshua to take over. And so Joshua had a, Joshua had a lot of history with these people that he was leading. And this particular time, Joshua, like I said, was on his deathbed. And he called all the leaders to him. And he was just saying that, you know, I'm going to give you some words of encouragement. And I'm going to give you some words as a leader before I leave you. And Joshua was saying to them, he called them all together to give instructions, to give wisdom. And Joshua was giving them the word of the Lord. But he was reminding them as he was giving them the word where God had brought them from. And what God had did for them. And then he was talking about the generations and generations and generations even before him. And he talked about Abraham. And he talked about how God spoke to Abraham and how God um, allowed Abraham to go ahead at this place called, I think it's pronounced Shechem. And this was the place where Joshua was talking to the leaders. And this particular place is also where Abraham was able to build the altar to, for his son Isaac. But at the same time, what I notice about this sacred place is that this is where God, these people had encounters with God at this place. And so Abraham had an encounter with God at this place. And then it goes to talk about Jacob and how he had an encounter with God at this place. And then it went on to say how Moses had an encounter with God at this place. And so as I was reading and studying, I said, Lord, I said, where is it that the people of God can have an encounter with you that will, their life will not be the same again? Where is that place, Father, where we can find a place where we can be with the Father and it will be like no other experience at all? Where is it? Are you looking for that place? And so Joshua, um, at this place, he began to tell them about the generation and the generations. And that's what I want to share with you today. God is saying, as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Is that your decree today to the house? Are you telling God today, as for me and my household, we are going to serve the Lord? Or what are you? And in the text, hallelujah, I believe that Joshua was able to say that because he lived that testimony. He lived that he was serving the Lord. They can understand that he was serving God because of what he did, because of how he carried himself, because of how he talked, because of how he walked, because he was able to lead his people through the wilderness. And he was able to lead them year after year, even after. Moses died. He was able to lead them in the things of God. And so he could say, as for me, I don't know what you're going to do when I leave here. I don't know what your intent is when I die and God takes me home. But as for me and my Lord, am I doing 
And am I saying what you want me to say? Am I living this life in my household so that my children know that if God took me home, that they would know that they could call on this man called Jesus. That they would know that they could get on bended knees and God will hear them. So that they will know when situations come that they can't handle. That they can go to God for the answer. That God will lead, that God will direct, and that God will give them the answer. What kind of legacy am I leaving for the generations to come? In my studies, I found out that we can lose an entire generation between 25 and 30 years. An entire generation, if we don't take the time to tell them about Jesus. If we don't take the time to let them know that there is another. There's another option. You don't have to make the same mistakes that mom made, that dad made, that grandpa made, that grandma made, uncles and uncles and, and aunts and stuff and cousins. You don't have to make those same mistakes. God is asking us and telling that we have to get to the place to where we are training up our children in the way that they should go. So when they get old, as the word of the Lord says, they will not depart. That's the word of the Lord. And so God is saying, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. And I remember one time we were on our way to the store, and we went to the store, and Greg and myself and Maya, and we picked up a few things at Saints Club, and then I think Maya and I went to the Dollar Tree, because you know, um, Brother Greg is not trying to go from one store to the next store to the next store. <laughs> and so he dropped us off at the Dollar Tree, and Maya and I went inside, and we picked up a few things. Yeah. And then we got back in the car, and we were on our way home, and when we got home and unloaded, Maya couldn't find her phone. And I think she was about maybe 10 years old. She couldn't find her phone. And um, so I said, let's backtrack. And so I called Sam's Club, and the store was closed. And the last thing she remembered is that it was in the cart. And then she helped to unload the cart, right? And so I said, okay. And she was not happy. <laughs> and I said, Maya, before you go to sleep tonight, you need to pray. You need to ask God to help you find that phone. I said, because that was not budgeted to buy a new phone. So I'm going to need you to pray to God. And so Maya went on to sleep that night. And the next morning, it was the summertime because she went on to the summer program and my husband went on to work and I didn't have to be to work till a little bit later and I said, Lord, I need you to help her find the spoon. And I got a text from my client and they said um, that today's session was canceled. And so I had some free time that morning so instead of calling Sam's Club, I drove to Sam's Club. And I went in the store and I just went through the little where we went through the night before. I knew we only picked up a few items. Maybe she left it on the shelf. And so I didn't see anything. I came back out. I asked the customer service. I said, did you find a phone? She said, we hadn't found a phone there. I said, okay. I went back out. Maya said, I left it. I remember it in the car. So I could call this phone. I called the phone. I couldn't hear anything, but I could see in a distance. I'm standing in front of all these carts, and I could see something flickering. <laughs> but I didn't know. So this young man walked in, and I said, Sir, I said, I'm looking for a 
phone. I said, if I call the number, can you just look at the cards and see what you see? See what you hear? I know that man thought, okay. So I called the number, and he could see the flickering and where it was coming from. He said, if we pull about six or seven cards, I think you'll find. So we began to pull these cards. And sure enough, my phone was sitting there. Through the night, it still was charged. <laughs>
What are we going to do as parents, as guardians? What are we going to do in our household? Are we going to declare that we're going to serve the Lord, continue to serve the Lord? Or are we going to fold? Are we just going to just let our children do anything and everything? When Sunday morning comes and it's time for worship and it's time for Sunday school, are we giving them a choice? Do you want to stay home today? Are we letting them decide what they want to do? But Monday through Friday, we don't ask them. When it's time to go to school, do you want to go to school today or do you want to stay home? Yeah. They get not out of that house. They're not staying at home. But on Sunday morning, the family needs to come to church and to worship God together. Because you're teaching your children the way that they should go. I'm telling you, if we don't take the time with these generations, they're going to be lost without a savior. And can you just imagine what type of world we would live in? And those of us that are getting older, what type of world do we have to look forward to? If our leaders, if our children don't know anything about Jesus, don't know anything about the word of the Lord and what God requires us, how he wants us to walk up, what will happen? What will happen? If you think about that, and think about where you're at right now, let's do some self-evaluation in our own household. Yeah. Lord, what, what things can I do different to make sure that what I'm saying and what I'm doing, that you're getting the glory in my household? All right. All right, All right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So when I leave my household, mm. even the people on my job know, who I serve. Yes. Behind closed doors, my family knows who I serve. Yes. And I'm trying to get it so that my family, all of us, are serving God Almighty. Yes. And it also goes by your talk. What are you talking? What are you spewing out of your mouth? Is it things of God? Is it the ways of God? Or is the first thing that comes out is the four-letter word? What is your children hearing? What are they absorbing? What are they experiencing? Then we have to ask God to help us. Because I don't want any of our babies to be lost. I don't want any of our babies to have to go through something unnecessary that we could have helped them to avoid yes. by turning to the right answer. Yes. And by knowing that there is a right answer. Yes. So Joshua was saying to these leaders before he died, as for me and my household, I don't know what you're going to do, but we're going to serve the Lord. one of us today. Self-examination. We got some generations. And I'm not going to say that they're lost. But I'm going to say that we have a fight against us. But they can come back to God. They can come back to God. But we got work to do. We've got work to do. 25 to 30 years that we can lose an entire generation. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important for when we come to worship that our children come to worship. Mm -hmm.
When we come to Sunday school, then our children come to Sunday school. It's important that your children know about this man called Jesus. Because even when they leave your household, what you have planted, you should be able to see the water, should see the increase, should be able to see the harvest at some point. Because you can't be there with them all the time. You can't. So when my daughter left and went to college in August, I had a hard time. I had a hard time with it, but I tried so hard not to show it. Because she wanted to experience this college life and live in the dorm and be away from home. And I was like, ooh, okay. <laughs> if that's what you want to do, okay. And so I supported her. We went shopping and we got all the stuff for the dorm and everything off the list and everything. And then we had the open house and then all of a sudden the weeks just went past and it was time to bring her to school. And when we got to the dorm and we began to put the stuff away, I pulled up my oil. <laughs> We about to pray over this room. We about to anoint the doorposts. We about to anoint the mouths. We about to take over the things. I'm not just going to leave you here. But I understand the Holy Spirit. And I understand that whatsoever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever I do on earth will be in heaven. And I understand the word of the Lord. And so up that oil and begin to anoint. And then we circled up, the three of us, and we prayed over her room. And at some point, we have to just learn to give it to God and trust God. And that's where I was. I had to give it to him and trust God. And I had to trust him on so many levels, but I had to trust that since Maya was a baby, she was in church. She never knew nothing else but church. She never knew nothing else but God. And I had to trust that at this time that I leave her, that God would step in and that he would take care of her. And so we left. I didn't cry all the way home. I was good. Amen. I said bye to Maya, didn't cry, I was good. All the way home, Greg keeps asking, you okay? <laughs> you okay? I'm good, I'm good. That night, Maya called to say good night. Ooh, and that was it. <laughs> All I did was hear her voice. And that was it, but yet I still had to trust God. Yes. Through the weeks of Maya's first month at school, Maya began to send texts to Dad and I. She began to send verses to Dad. She began to encourage us. She was telling us about this class, and she's like, I'm just kind of nervous about this class, and I'm just not sure about it and everything. She had a test to take, I think, within two weeks. And I said, make sure that you pray. And she said, Mom, I've already prayed. <laughs> After that, I think later on that day or a couple days later, she sent the results of that test. And it was a good result. She said, I don't know how I did this. <laughs> But when she was saying, when she was sending the encouraging words and the verses to us, when she was talking about, I'm praying about this because this is something that's difficult for me right now. All right. I went back, Sister Jessie, to when I told the Lord, Lord, because yeah. sometimes we doubt ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, Lord, did I do all that I needed to do in these 18 years? Mm -hmm. 
that will set her up to succeed, but also set her up to be the woman of God that you call for her to be, that she will continue to walk in. What we've already been able to lay, to put that foundation there. And I got my answer. And I'm still getting my answer. And so as most of you know, I wrote a book. And the book is, in the book, it is a prayer journal. And my am called or text one day and said, Mom, I started the prayer journal. And she said, before I go to class every day, I'm reading my scripture. I'm doing my prayer journal and I'm praying. Mm -hmm. God was giving us confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. I don't know what struggles my husband had with this because he didn't really show it. I think he was just more concerned about me and how if I was going to fall apart and all this stuff. And I felt like it sometimes. Because we had our rituals that we did at night, Maya and I. And I would go in her room and I would just, what you doing and how you doing and what's going on and is there something I need to know about? Is there something going on that you ain't saying anything about? I mean, I'm just going there. Mom, I'm trying to watch TV. I'm so still going there. I'm still going there. But even in that, the watch of the different shows that we like together, just the talking back and forth. Yeah. But I come by to tell you today, okay. if you have children, if you have grandchildren, we've got work to do. Yes. We, and it's not too late. It's not too late to introduce them to this man called Jesus. It's not too late to tell them right from wrong. It's not too late to help them along with their journey so that they will be able to meet the master, Jesus, one day. Yeah. Our children is leaving this world yes. at an all-time record high. Our young people choose you this day yes. who you will serve. Yes. Declare today who you will serve. And if you can honestly say to yourself, Lord, I have messed up. I have not done. I haven't been consistent. But I'm willing to start this way over again. I'm willing, Lord God, to try to help my children to make it in and to tell them about this man called Jesus. I don't know everything, but we're going to learn together. We're going to walk this journey together. We're going to do this together. If you just need another start over, is that what we want to call it? Another start over. If that's you today, I want to pray for you. Why don't you stand if that's you today? We just need another start over. We just need another opportunity to get this thing right. Maybe you might say, well, you know what, Reverend Joan, my kids ain't going to listen to me. <laughs> my kids, they are so set in their ways, and some of them is half grown, and some of them is all the way grown, and, you know, I can't tell them nothing. But how many know only God <laughs> can test them out? No matter how hard it gets, we got to do our part. And we got to, I think we learned in um, Sunday school, we talked about consistency. We've got to be consistent. No matter how hard it gets, we've got to be consistent. Amen? Amen. Don't throw these children away and say there's no hope. 
don't throw these generations away, these young people, and say there's no hope, they're a, a worthless cause. No, because God said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's what God says about. And so we need to join together and say, Lord, thank you for my second chance. I thank you for my second chance to get this right. I'm going to pray for you today. And I want you to touch and agree that this is going to be the turning point. The turning point. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And that means when you come over for holidays and get together, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. This is what we do here. As for me and my house, amen. God, we bless your name today. 